Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, hello, can you hear me? Can somebody respond if you can hear? Whew. Okay, just at least raise your hand. Okay, good. Good to be able to see you guys. Um, hopefully, I can hear you also. So, last time we saw efficient algorithms for various problems on trees. So, what are the problems we saw? Vertex cover, independent set, dominating set. So maybe you want to put it on mute your mic and then maybe when you ask questions you can turn it on. What else can you see? Coloring which is sort of trivial and click. These are problems quite trivial <coughs> on trees but um, we saw some dynamic programming or other algorithms on uh, trees and today we wanted to look at these problems on bipartite graphs. So again coloring and click are trivial, it's too colorable and click you cannot have anything more than two. Oh also see back vertex set right. So I said that these two are NP-complete on bipartite graphs. Anybody has a proof? Yes? So, this one. Both. Okay. Bipartite graph, you can subdivide DHS. So for which, put a, put a vertex for which problem are you talking? Uh, for uh, feedback vertex. Feedback vertex. So anybody? There tried hardness proof for these problems. So for feedback vertex set, the suggestion is take we will reduce it from the NP hard feedback vertex set in general graphs. How do we reduce it? Basically we will we'll, so this is general graph FES problem. So remember, recall what is the feedback vertex set problem? You want to pick a minimum subset of vertices that cover all cycles. Right? Once you delete, the remaining graph should be a forest, a, a cyclic graph. So the reduction is that basically subdivide every edge. So if your graph is This is your G, then your G prime will have basically a new vertex on every edge. So this is your G prime. Why is G prime bipartite? So because we remember we want to get to a bipartite feedback vertex. Right? So why is B prime, G prime bipartite? Four even even cycles also become even cycle that's also important right so every cycle basically doubles its length any cycle here not doubles is it just doubles yes. yeah okay so it just doubles its so if you have k edges before in the cycle now it will have two k edges because you have just subdivided every edge so every cycle is even okay so it's a bipartite graph so good so we got uh, reduce from general graph to bipartite graph and it's not very hard to see that if you have a k-sized if yes if and only if there is a k-sized f yes here because you know just take one direction is easy take that k-sized f yes they will cover all the cycles because these new vertices you introduced are all uh, there are no edges between them and conversely, okay, how do you prove the converse? So if you have a case size FES, what do you Take do? Take a minimum FES over there. 
you know, k size. I want to show k goes to k. If the, okay. if the, if the, the vertex which is representing the edge is the you remove it and add one of the inputs. Right. So, if the case, I mean, ideally, if the case I is the FES, picked my original vertices, that is great for me. I can just go and transfer back to the same thing and that will cover all cycles. But if your case I is the FES, picked one of your vertices you introduced like these, which cycle is it covering? It's a degree 2 vertex. Okay. So, you might as well pick any of its neighbor to cover that cycle. So, you just move, take your feedback vertex set of size k you got here. If it contains these newly introduced vertices, that is representing an edge. So, you can move to one of its endpoints and just pick that into your solution and then you can transfer back to a k-sized FES there. Okay. So, this requires a formal proof, just um, work it out and you know, you have to get used to doing this kind of NPR proofs rigorously. Okay. So, that is an easy reduction. So, that shows that even though it was completely trivial in trees, once you move to bipartite graphs, this problem becomes NP hard. Okay, what about dominating set? He may want to sit on that chair because wires are sticking. Yeah, what about dominating set? I want to claim that dominating, so recall what a dominating set is, it is a set of vertices that dominate every other vertex. So, for any vertex which is not in the dominating set, one of its neighbors is in the dominating set. Okay. How do we show that dominating set is anti-complete on bipartite graphs? So, that first you show it as an NP. Okay. So, witness would be a set of vertices that realizes the dominating set which you can verify in polynomial time. Where is the hardness from? Anybody tried? Set cover. Set cover. Okay. Good. So, you have a reduction from set cover. What is dominating set? Dominating set is some k vertices covering all vertices, right? So, so what is the instance of set cover? There is a universe and there is a family of subsets of u. So, okay. So you are given a universe and a family of subsets. What I want to construct here? A bipartite graph. Right? So, you have some universe, let us say 1, 2, 3 up to n and my family will have some sets like 3, 4, 7, 2, 8, da, 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 da. and what is the question here? Are there k sets whose union is the universe. That means, can you pick some small number of sets, k sets here that will cover the entire universe. Right? It is pretty easy to reduce dominating set to this. Right? Think about it. I, I can model dominating set as a set cover problem because the universe would be my vertex set. That is what I am trying to cover and the family of sets will be a vertex and all its neighbors. So, then I can ask can I pick this k vertices that will cover the remaining vertices. Okay? So, now we want to go in the other direction and we want to get to a bipartite graph that will show that in bipartite graph the dominating set is NP complete. So, bipartite graph is two parts. So, what are the two parts? sets in one direction and so let us call this family as some f1, f2 up to fm. So, I will have my elements here 
my sets here and whatever elements f i contains those are the elements so f1 contains f2 contains 2 and 8 f1 contains 3 4 7 so it will be 3 4 and maybe 7 and so I will draw it just like this ok clear so one direction is easy if you have k sets together cover the entire universe I can pick those k vertices that will dominate the entire vertex set well not quite those k vertices will dominate all of these guys but who is going to dominate these vertices ok so you need to add, do something more to the entity so what do you want to do take okay, question add a, add a vertex here that will dominate so this is my graph ok for now we will see what more to do <laughs> so in one direction if I have k sets that cover my entire universe I will pick those k sets here they will cover all these elements and then I will pick also this vertex so that it will dominate all these guys so k will go to k plus 1 here ok first of all this is not looking like a bipartite graph or is it I do not know I mean I do not see two partition put this vertex here ok so it is a bipartite graph right ok good now conversely I want to say that if you have k plus 1 vertices that will dominate this entire vertex set I will get a k sized set cover there right so ideally it will be nice if this k plus 1 set dominating set contains this vertex and k of these sets then I can pull it back to a set cover but there is no reason it should be like that the k plus 1 you know I might the dominating set might pick some vertices from here some from here it might pick this so what do I do ok ideas so I want to do the converse if I have k plus 1 dominating set I want to put the k sized set cover and the whole thing will work very nicely if my k plus 1 size dominating set picks this and some k vertices from here but in general it might pick something from here as well and I want to be able to transfer I mean we did that for feedback vertex set right if it picks the newly introduced vertices we said we can do some adjustment so that I can get an equivalent feedback vertex set that, that contains the original vertices and I can transfer it back. So first thing is that somehow I want to force this vertex into my solution. So what do I do? The right hand side can only cover the left hand side vertices. Right hand side can cover only the left hand side vertices, yes. So the single vertex can also cover those. So if you can remove the particular side. A single neighbor to the extra vertex. Yeah, so suppose why do not I add this vertex in my graph? Okay, so suppose now this is my new graph, right? I am just building it up based on what I require. So now my new graph is I do this. So now this is my graph, and I want k plus 1 size dominating set. Clearly, this vertex has to be dominated. If your dominating set picks this, you might as well pick it here it will dominate this so do the adjustment so that this is now forced ok once this is forced if your dominating set contains some vertices from here why are they there who are they trying to dominate yes they dominate these vertices but that is not necessary because this vertex dominates all of this so the reason these vertices are there to dominate themselves so you might as well pick some set that contains that and move your solution so essentially a formal proof would be a k plus 1 dominating set in this bipartite graph without loss of generality can contain this vertex and k of these vertices ok if it is not of that type 
you can get an equivalent solution which will also be of the same size and uh, same size or even smaller size and cover all the vertices. Now once you have such a dominating set, you know that these k vertices are dominating this vertices so that corresponding k sets will cover the entire universe. Okay. You probably will not do too many, probably not do any NP hardness proof in the class but you know these are simple easy ones, it is important you know you, you should be able to just see the connection, what problem to reduce from and how do you do this gadgetry to do this reduction. Okay, good. So, that shows that once you move to a larger class of graph from trees, some of these problems already become hard. So now we will look at a polynomial time algorithm for vertex cover and bipartite graphs which will immediately imply a polynomial time algorithm for maximum independent set as well because the complement of a vertex cover is max independent set. Okay. So, cover or maximum independent set. So, one tempting thing is that a maximum independent set in a bipartite graph, you know, each part is independent. So, pick the larger one and that is a maximum independent set. Right? So, I have, let us call this L and I have a graph which looks like this. The question is, you know, whichever is the larger of these two, that is an independent set, will that necessarily be a maximum independent set or come up with a counter example where that may not be the maximum independent set. So, let me leave that. algorithm is based on this following nice max theorem um, it's called Koenig's theorem this tells you that in a bipartite graph the size of the maximum matching equal to size of the minimum vertex cover. And maximum matching is something we can find in polynomial time, not just in bipartite graphs, even in general graphs actually, but for bipartite graph there is a very simple algorithm to find a maximum matching. So, how do you find maximum matching in bipartite graphs? This is something standard you should have done it, I, I did at least when I taught algorithms course. So anybody there, how do you find the maximum matching in a bipartite graph? So by max flow? By max flow, yes exactly. So let us try that. So how do you do? So you have to construct directed graph with vertex S and T. So, so 
you can find the maximum matching in polynomial time using max flow we will get to that that immediately tells you that you can find the minimum vertex cover in polynomial time the size of the minimum vertex cover because that's what this theorem says it doesn't tell you how to get the minimum vertex cover it right this theorem says the size of the maximum matching and the size of the minimum vertex cover are the same so in a bipolar graph using max flow we will find maximum matching we will get the size that immediately tells you the size of the minimum vertex cover we still need to find the minimum vertex cover okay so we will do that so let's recall how we modeled maximum matching as a max flow so we constructed two vertices s and t and S is adjacent to every vertex here and R is adjacent. It is directed edge from every vertex of R to T and here you have your edges of the graph. So, this is my right. So, you are given this bipartite graph that is this E but they are all directed from left to right and all the edges of capacity 1. And the max flow tells you that if you find the max flow from S to T, then you look at all edges of the original graph that have a non-zero flow, they form the maximum match. Okay. So, this requires a proof. Um, why? Because uh, it is possible that the flow goes like this, right? So, there is a 1 here and there is a half and a half. A flow of 1 from S to T can go like this. Then if you look at edges with non-zero flow on this side, which is these two edges, they do not necessarily form a matching. Okay? So, you can't just take I mean, it does not it doesn't follow immediately they do a max flow and pick up all the edges with non-zero flow on the edges and that they form a matching need not be well actually it turns out it is because if you recall the way you will do max flow using Ford Fulkerson algorithm you will always find an augmenting path and send as much flow possible through that path and so flow value will always remain integral because when you send the flow through the path every edge gets a flow of 1. So, you will never get this half half. So, the flow values are integral. So, you know whatever non-zero flow you have on the edges is of uh, value 1 and it is not possible that there is a flow of 1 from here, there is a flow of 1 from here. Why not? I mean because this also violates the fact that it is matching. So, 1 is the integrality. Why can't I have from S there is a flow and that flow if I have that then that is also a problem because there are two edges coming out of X why can't I have that ok inflow is 1 because the capacity of this edge is only 1 you cannot send flow of 2 through this edge there is only flow of 1 coming in so only one of these edges can go out ok so, I mean, this is all something you should have, would have learnt in the algorithms course. So, using simply by running max flow, you can get maximum matching in a bipartite graph. Good. Now, I will tell you how to get the minimum vertex cover. Well, we will actually see two or three algorithms for this. Maybe some of you would have seen at least one of this, maybe both more than one of this. We will see three algorithms for finding a minimum vertex cover in a bipartite graph. So, here is first one. So, I find the max flow in this flow network. Max flow min cut theorem tells you, so suppose, okay, so suppose max flow value which is equal to the size of the maximum matching, this is what you need to argue is some k. In this bipartite gra graph you got a maximum matching of size k. Max flow min cut theorem tells you 
that there is a, an st cut of size k right so there is a So an ST cut means that S is in one side and T is in the other side, right? So it's a partition of the vertex set, this whole vertex set. So how does the ST cut look like? So I have my S here. So ST cut will have S and some vertices from here and some vertices from here. Let's say this is my, this is S and T will have the remaining vertices. Okay. So, and there is a when ST cut and what is what is what do you mean the capacity of the cut or not size right rather capacity. Capacity of the cut is just look at all edges going from S to T add their capacities and that is the capacity of the net. So, max flow min cut theorem tells you that whatever max flow value is equal to min cut value. So, there is such a cut. Okay. So, let us call this set as L s L intersection s R s and this is you know L s bar and R s bar. let c equal to I am going to produce you a vertex cover ok what is c c is ls no ls bar union rs union neighborhood of ls intersection rs bar given this bipartite graph we constructed this directed network with an s and the t ran max flow and got the max flow value as k and as a bonus from the max flow min cut theorem you also get a min cut let the cut be looking like this from this so ls is like what is ls l intersection s and rs is r intersection s and ls bar is l minus ls ok so these are the four sets now i just produce the following sets i take all the vertices in ls bar sorry not this is not rs bar pick all the vertices in rs take all these vertices take all these vertices and from rs bar look at all the neighbors of ls that are the neighbors here and collect that my claim is c is a vertex cover of g and claim 2 size of c is equal to k yeah, because what is my goal? My goal is to produce you a vertex cover of size k because maximum matching uh, to show that maximum matching. Note that if your maximum matching is k, any vertex cover size must be at least k. Okay? This is very, very important useful information which we will keep using later on. Size of any 
vertex cover is greater than or equal to size of any matching. Why? Because if you have a matching of a certain size, you need to cover these edges. Any vertex cover should cover these edges. So you need to pick at least one vertex from each of these edges. A vertex from each of these edges cannot cover more than one edge because these edges are disjoint. So any vertex cover size must be at least size of any matching. So in particular for us, given these parameters, any vertex cover size must be at least k. And I will produce you a vertex cover of size k, so I got a minimum vertex cover. Okay, so if I prove these two claims, I would have shown that minimum vertex cover size is equal to maximum match. Good. So let's. So which one is easy? Well, both are easy actually. Um, how do I show that C is a vertex cover? Every edge should be covered. That's all you have to show, right? However, I mean, any edge incident on LS bar is covered by LS bar because I'm picking it into the solution, right? Any edge incident on LS where the other endpoint is here is covered by this, and any edge incident on LS where the other endpoint is here is covered by RS, and that's all the edges. Right? Because it's a bipartite graph, you look at all edges, and I want to show that every edge is covered by one of these sets. I produce you three sets, take the union, and I'm claiming that that is a minimum vertex cover. And why is that? Because pick any edge, there are no edges inside, there are no edges here, so the edges are all across. Any edge incident on LS bar is covered by this, any edge incident on RS is covered by this. The only question is now about edges of this type, they are covered by. RS. Okay, so this is easy. I want to show that size of C is K. Let's what is the capacity? So K remember is the capacity of the cut. Right? Because that's how we got the cut. It's a min, min cut and its capacity is k. So what is the capacity of the cut? It's, you look at all edges going in this direction. There are no edges here, it's my point of graph. Add all their capacities and that's the capacity of the cut, right? So let me draw my cut like this. So this is my S, which will have vertex S, LS, and RS. And T will have T, LS bar, and that's so. Where are the edges of this cut? Where are they going from? Where are the edges? Hmm? Yes to T, no, there are no edges. Yeah, capital S to capital T, I agree, yes. But tell me in which sets? S to L, LS bar. S to LS bar, right? Because S to LS bar, remember for every vertex here, there is an edge with capacity 1. Okay? From LS, there is nothing to T, there is nothing to LS bar, but LS to RS bar, there are edges. This is the graph edges, whatever the edges in the graph, I don't know. And then, from RS to T. For every vertex from RS, there is an edge to T. So let's add the capacities. What is the capacity? From S to LS bar, there is every vertex has an edge with capacity 1. So this is equal to LS bar plus from RS bar to T, again every vertex here has an edge to T with a capacity 1. So that is Less. Here I don't know, there are a lot of edges of this graph. So, right, so I have LS and I am looking at, so I claim the number 
number of edges is greater than or equal to neighborhood of LS intersection RS part. Right? Because it is possible that let us say there are these two edges going into the same vertex. In the neighborhood, I will count only one, but in terms of edges, I should count two. So, the number of edges which counts for the capacity of the cut is at least this plus this plus this. But what is this? This is exactly size of the set I have picked. So, I have shown that the cover I have produced you has size at most k, but it cannot be strictly less than k because matching size is k. So, every vertex cover should have size greater than or equal to k. So, the size is equal to k. Okay. So, nice and simple algorithm just to run max flow, get your min cut and pull out some sets from here and take the union and that is a min vertex curve. So, the running time is essentially whatever time we needed to find this maximum matching. Clear questions? It is not very intuitive, you know, where is the matching and so on. But the next algorithm I will tell you gives you a little bit of an intuition of relating to matching. Okay, but yeah. Anybody has seen this proof? This is the first time I saw this proof yesterday. <laughs> okay, so here is a, another algorithm which sort of reverse engineer and try to see what is it they are aiming for and then we will develop this algorithm, right. So, let us call this algorithm 2. Find the maximum matching again, use flow or whatever you want to do. I mean conceptually these two algorithms are same, I mean I think they produce the same set. So, I have my bipartite graph and I have found maximum matching here. Maybe there are some vertices. These are unsaturated. Let's call them set U. So unsaturated, which means no matching edge. And this could be there in both sides. So, what I am going to do is to produce a vertex cover which picks exactly one vertex from each matching edge. Okay? And that will show that maximum matching and minimum vertex cover are same, right? So I will produce a vertex cover which produce, which picks exactly one vertex from each of the matching edge, nothing else. That will show the minimum vertex cover is maximum matching. Right? So let us see how you would go about doing that. So these are unsaturated vertices and they will have some edges going out, right? They must be going out to some saturated vertex. So, so these are saturated. Okay. So look at the unsaturated vertices. Look at their neighbors. They must be saturated, right? Why? Otherwise, it is not a maximum matching because if one of these vertices have another vertex which is not saturated, what prevents you from adding that edge to the matching? Right? Since the given matching is maximum matching, its neighbors must be 
a matched to vertex okay now i need to cover these edges for the vertex cover and my promise or the goal is i'm going to pick vertices only from matched edges so i naturally am forced to pick these so i have these unsaturated vertices and look at their neighbors and pick these into the solution they are all necessarily matched right okay so they have a matching edge i am not going to pick these vertices into my solution why because what is my quota hmm. one from every matching edge that's why i'm restricting myself so i'm just saying you know it's sort of whatever they are aiming for that forces how i'm going to pick it into the solution so all these guys are saturated so let me take an, their partner in the matching edge and i'm not going to pick these because from these matching edges i already picked these vertices good so now i will continue from here so i'm going what i am finding is an so these are unsaturated you know non matching edges these are all in the matching so i'm finding an what is called an alternating path right so now from here i will follow edges not in m then right? again these vertices are saturated why Yeah, um, but maybe there is. No, these are saturated. This is saturated because there is a matching, right? Okay. So all these are saturated, and I followed an edge. If there is any edge at all, if there is no edge, then my path will stop here anyway. So if there is some edge out of it, I am going to use edges not in the matching from these vertices because there cannot be any other matching edge. There is already a matching edge. so i pick those vertices and i reach there and i claim first that these guys are already they are all saturated why the same reason why these guys are saturated because i will get a better matching by doing an augmenting path okay so look at this unsaturated edge saturated edge unsaturated edge and if this vertex is unsaturated i can do the symmetric difference make this into the matching get it out of the matching put it into the matching and i get one extra edge in the matching right so if any of these vertices are unsaturated then i will get a, which what i have is not a maximum matching because i can do a symmetric start from here unsaturated not in matching matching not in matching now i do swap put it in the matching take this out of the matching put it in the matching i get one extra edge in the matching so all these vertices are saturated i am going to pick these into my solution to cover these edges because i restricted myself not to pick these vertices so i can keep going as long as there is some path when does it stop if you know this will have a matching edge for sure it might stop here because maybe somebody has no non matching edge out of it and it will stop here but if it continues i'll continue keep doing this and i'll pick these alternate vertices now that's it i mean i satisfied whatever i wanted to meet right i have picked one edge from each matching edge exactly one and what i have is a vertex cover because it, you know the edges are all of this type and i've covered all the edges okay so one can you know formally describe the algorithm basically i start with unsaturated vertices and anything in the odd distance from them i'm going to pick it into the solution anything in the even distance i don't pick it into the solution and you can argue so now what happens is this might stop then you may still have some matched edges which for which you have not picked anything you can just go pick arbitrarily one from each of the matched edges and together you will have exactly a vertex cover where every matched edge is exactly one vertex picked 
this is the usual standard algorithm actually. The third algorithm I am going to use again it will be very useful for other techniques we will use and that is using linear programming ok. So, let us see that as well. So, all these are proofs of Koenig's theorem. Okay, let us write minimum vertex cover as an integer linear program, right. So, we will write it as a linear program. So, how do I do that, right? So, what is it I want to minimize? Hmm? Number of vertices I pick into the solution, right? So, let us, so what are the variables first? What are the variables for my linear program? I take it as 0, 1 variable. It is 1 means it is into the solution, 0 means it is not into the solution. Let us define it this way. So, my vertex set, let us say, then I have a variable xi. The interpretation is 1 if i is in my vertex cover solution and 0 otherwise. So, what is it I want to minimize? The sum, right. So, minimize summation xi i equal to 1 to n, ok. What is the constraint? I mean if I really want to minimize that is all I have, I do not have to pick anything empty set and have a solution, but I have some constraint to meet. What is the constraint? Every edge needs to be covered, right? How do I write it as a linear inequality? For edge i plus. So, for all, let us, yeah, ok, um, u v in e x u plus x v is greater than or equal to 1. So, whenever you give me an edge, one of the endpoints must be into the solution, maybe even both, but that is ok. So, this is a linear, so and the constraint is that x i is in, right? but I do not know what this s is. So, this is my interpretation, I am looking for the s. So, this is my linear program an integer linear program because I am restricting my variables to integers. In fact, it is even 0 1 linear program because I am restricting my variables to take value 0 and 1. So, I want to minimize some linear objective function subject to some linear inequalities. Okay. This is it models exactly vertex cover, minimum vertex cover. So, what do I do with this? Um, can I solve 0 1 linear program efficiently in polynomial time? Not in general. Hmm? Not in general. Not in general, why? How do you? Because you can reduce 3 sac to. These guys are laughing. What? Because? We have reduced vertex curve to this. Yeah. You just showed that this problem is NP complete. Right, 0 1 integer linear programming is NP complete because we just reduced the NP complete problem vertex cover to this. So, it is NP complete. So, you can you can solve it in polynomial time. I mean we have seen this in the algorithms course. So, what do you do? So, in fact, if you do not have this extra discrete constraints, then you can solve it in polynomial times so that, that is the linear program. So, I will relax this to suppose I allow fractions I make this 0 x i less than or equal to 1. In fact, a 
one second thought would tell you that I don't even need this constraint, right? Just take sign greater than or equal to zero is enough. Why? It's a minimization problem, and this is all the constraint. There is no reason for the LP to take a value, make it greater than one. Why would it want to do it? Because I, just, you know, I could just bring it down to one. It will satisfy the constraint. I will bring down the objective function. So it's enough to mention this constraint anyway. Okay. So that's a linear programming formulation of vertex cover, and um, you can solve it in polynomial time. The only problem is it gives you fractions. So I don't know what to do with these fractions. It doesn't immediately translate for me a solution for the vertex cover. Okay. But we'll see what we can do with it. Okay. Now, LP duality gives you a dual solution. So, dual of min vertex cover LP. So, what is a dual linear program? Um, so, if you have minimize C transpose X subject to a x greater than or equal to b, x greater than or equal to 0, the dual would be, the constraints would be a transpose y less than or equal to c. So, the constraint matrix will get transposed and you introduce my dual variables y, greater than or equal to becomes less than or equal to, the right hand side becomes the vector corresponding to the objective function. And the objective function now becomes maximize B transpose y. So essentially, the right hand side becomes the objective function coefficients. The objective function coefficients of the primal becomes the right hand side. Greater than or equal becomes less than or equal to. And that's dual. And what we know using lin based on linear programming duality is that at the optimum, both the objective functions are the same. Okay, minimum minimum value of this and the maximum value of this, if both the values are bounded, you know, it's a feasible, bounded feasible polytope is what you have for these, the set of points that meet the constraint, then at the optimum, both these guys are same, okay. You're going to use the LP duality and to prove Koenig's theorem. So, let's write the dual of this LP. Now that I've told you how to write the dual, right? So, how do you write the dual? Let's let's do this mechanically, right? Minimized will become maximized, right? That's a good start. Maximize what? So, okay. I also, one thing I forgot to say is that there is a variable in the dual corresponding to every constraint here. Every constraint here corresponds to a variable here, every variable here corresponds to a constraint here. So, the constraints correspond to edges here. So, there is a variable corresponding to every edge. Okay, let us call it ye is the dual variable. So, maximize. The coefficients of the objective function are the right hand side and thankfully right hand side is all 1. So, what is it I want to maximize? Yeah, sum of the y's, right? So, there is a constraint for every edge that corresponds to a variable. So, that becomes my objective function. The coefficients are all 1. So, maximize summation ye is the objective function for the dual of the vertex cover. What are the constraints? Well, the constraint matrix greater than or equal to becomes less than or equal to. So, let us read that, whatever we are sure of. The coefficient becomes 
right hand side so let's say r equal to 1 the constraint matrix becomes a transpose of the matrix right so and the constraints correspond to vertices because here the variables correspond to vertices so there in the dual the constraints will correspond to vertices and correspond to the columns of this matrix so So when do you, so let's now the are for, every for every vertex yes okay so for every v in v so if you look at this constraint matrix how does it look like right for every edge so this will have e1 e2 em and you know e is adjacent to e so there will be you know, u and v so you it will have a 1 1 here so, if you pick an edge, there are exactly two variables inside it, uh, incident on that edge. So, that would correspond to 1, 1 in the constraint matrix of this LP here. So, now if you take the column U, that becomes the corresponding constraint here. So, when do you have 1s here in this column? Hmm? When an edge is incident on U that's when you have 1 here right because for all the edges incident on u this column will have a 1 okay and if the other end point is w maybe then u will have 1 and w will have a 1 because that's, that's what these constraints are for every edge right so if I have to write the column as a constraint for the dual then in the column corresponds to vertices that's good for every vertex p look at all edges incident on that vertex for each one the coefficient would be 1 here because the coefficient comes from the objective function that is good. So, it is summation y e e is incident on b is less than or equal to 1 and my y e is greater than or equal to 1. What happened was you just flipped the incidence. Yeah, dual as a transpose. Yeah, it's a transpose of the incident matrix. Okay, good. So I relaxed the vertex cover LP, this constraint, took the dual. What is this LP looking like? Suppose the y's are all in 0 or 1. What does that mean? Yes, it is greater than or equal to 0. Suppose y is a 0 and 1. So, what is it saying? Look at any vertex, right? Look at all edges incident on that vertex. The sum of the y values is at most 1, okay? Suppose the y's are 0 or 1, then what does it say? At most one edge is incident on this vertex. So, assume that y equal to 1 is a set of solution of edges I am picking here. So, what does this LP correspond to then? For every vertex, at most one edge is incident on that vertex. Then what am I looking? What is the set of edges? It's a matching. What I am looking for is a matching, right? So, this is and I want to maximize the set of edges I pick into the solution such that for every vertex at most one edge is incident on that vertex from the solution. So, this is the matching LP. Now, I said LP duality tells me that at the optimum these two objective functions are the same. So, minimum vertex cover and maximum matching are the same. Not quite. Why not? It can be fractional. It can be, I mean, this is not minimum vertex cover LP, right? Once I relax, this is the minimum vertex cover LP. Once I relaxed it, it is not quite minimum vertex cover LP, it is something else now because once I put the 0 1 constraint, it is a vertex cover LP. Once I relax it to a linear programming, I do not know what it is. But then I take the dual, same problem here. If I make this constraint to be 0 1, this is the matching LP. 
okay so if we if we think of it as a fractional vertex cover lp and think of this as a fractional matching lp then this tells you that at the optimality the the value of the minimum fractional vertex cover is equal to maximum fractional matching okay but in general we know that vertex cover and matching sizes are not necessarily same in general graph for example look at this graph what is the maximum matching size 1 right you can only get maximum matching size is 1 but if you look at what is the minimum vertex cover size you need at least two vertices to cover all edges so that's two so these two are not the same in general okay but if i am allowed fractional values on the vertices then i can put a half here half here half here for my vertex cover and i get a 1.5 fractional vertex cover because what is what is the constraint for every edge the sum of the end points is at least one and similarly for matching i can say half here half here half here and get for every vertex the sum of the edges going out of it incident the fraction value is sum to at most one okay so in a general graph it is not necessarily true that maximum matching minimum vertex cover sizes are same here is an example counter example but in bipartite graphs they both are same and that's what we wanted to show using all this lp duality so what do i how do i show it for bipartite graphs okay so it turns out these constraints are so structured for bipartite graphs that if you solve this lp not the integer linear programming you solve the lp for bipartite graphs by magic it actually gives you zero one solution not necessarily a fractional solution that's great right so even without this constraint if i relax it to say xi greater than or equal to zero we will show that's what we will show in the next 10 15 minutes that for the bipartite minimum vertex cover the constraint matrix is so structured that the lp solution itself is integral okay so that that will wrap up the missing piece here so so it doesn't matter whether you solve integer linear program or lp the optimum solution of the lp itself is integral no fractions so you just take the lp and solve it and similarly here you take the lp and solve it and we know that opt the optimality both are same and that's why this min max equality or min max equality works in bipartite graphs because the constraint matrix is structured okay what do i mean by structure and what am what do i have to show so what i want to show is the following questions So we will show two things: the constraint matrix. Right, this is constraint matrix. Is this matrix where you have for every edge there is a one one and and so on? Okay, I think it's easier to argue with the transpose or turn matrix. Okay. the constraint matrix of let's say the maximum match is totally uni model what does that what do i mean by that so any matrix a is totally unimodular means that the determinant of the 
every sub matrix is 0 or plus or minus 1. So, it is unimodular. So, it, you have this huge constraint matrix, go and look at any sub matrix of this matrix and look at its determinant, either it is 0 or 1 or minus 1. Because of that, the optimum LP solution is integral. That is no fractions. So, if the constraint matrix of the matching LP is totally unimodular, the constraint matrix of the vertex cover LP is also totally unimodular, right? Because one is the transpose of the other, the determinants are the same. Yeah, oh, I am going to prove this. It is it's a transpose of that sub matrix. So okay, so okay, the second one is from again some LP theory. I will just tell you how it works and first one we will prove it. Um, so, how do I show the second one? It's um, so generally when you, when you have a, an LP like this, the optimum solution is a corner point. It's a basic feasible solution. What does that mean? It means that it is a, it's a solution of a tight system of equations. So you you pick a subset of constraints, put all equality there, take that matrix and solve it and you get the solution ok. So, now so what so proof of 2 is that the opt solution is actually a solution of a prime x is equal to b prime for some sub matrix A prime of A. Okay, so this is my constrained matrix. Right? So A x is equal to or less than or equal, greater than or equal to B. That is my constrained matrix. So you pick a, a some sub matrix, take the corresponding variables and put equality and solve it and whatever solution you get is the solution of my entire LP ok. So, this this you need basically some LP theory to argue this. So, now so now how do I you know by whatever Gaussian elimination or Kramer, Kramer's rule how do I solve this from Kramer's rule. So, what how do I get a solution for a prime x equal to b prime, the solution right. So, you have this a prime matrix and I want a solution for each of these things. So, what you do is you remove one column, replace it by the b prime column, take the determinant of that matrix by determinant of my a prime is the solution of this right this is this is high school linear algebra where you have this set of equations and the Kramer's rule if you apply that to solve the solution let's I'll just give you an example so I have let's say I have a 3 by 3 matrix and I have some x1, x2, x3 equal to b1, b2, and b3. I want to solve this and get values for x1, x2, x3. What Kramer's rule tells you that suppose I want it for x1, then what you do is 
replace the column by first column by b1 b2 b3 so i have b1 b2 b3 this matrix and take the determinant of this matrix divided by determinant of this matrix gives you the value for x1 for x2 replace this column by b1 b2 b3 and take the ratio of these determinants you get value for x2 similarly for x3 and what is sitting in the denominator is the determinant of this matrix which i know is cannot be zero here because that is a basic feasible solution so it's plus 1 or minus 1 so there are no fractions for the values okay so the opt solution is solution of the unique solution of some submatrix of this form and whatever way you are comfortable with you can see Kramer's rule is one easy way to see that the denominators are all plus 1 or minus 1 so the solutions are not fractions if your matrix is totally unimodular this is where we are using that every sub matrix has determinant plus 1 or minus 1 or 0 ok so now so again very important that it is for bipartite graphs I want to get into this LP proof is this vertex cover LP is something we want to keep using it in several other algorithms. So, for example, you can use the LP to get an easy two approximation algorithm. Okay. Okay. So now I want to give a proof of one. That every sub matrix is determinant plus one or minus one or zero. Of the so, how does a matching LP look like? Let's see it again. For so, for every vertex V, maybe V is incident on E one, E three. Let's see. So then it will be E3, E7. So those are the places it will be 1 in the constraint matrix. <coughs> Question? Okay. So the, in, the constraint matrix for matching is that for every vertex, if you look at sum of the y's incident on that vertex, so it will, these are the edges incident on it. So this plus this plus this is at most 1 is the right hand side. Right? So how many 1's are there in each column? exactly 2 right because if you take this edge c3 it may have a it's suppose it's bw then there will be b will have a 1 and w will have a 1 exactly 1 1 2 ones in every column okay let's see, that's all i need and it is a bipartite graph okay so keep that in mind it's a bipartite graph good so we're going to prove this by induction on Prediction on what? The dimension of the submatrix. Okay. So what do I want to show? So yeah. To show determinant of A prime is zero or plus or minus one, where A prime is a submatrix of it. The proof is by induction on the dimension of the matrix. So if it is a 1 by 1 matrix, you know, the entry is either 0 or 1, so its determinant is 0 or 1. So it's, that's the base case. So let's say it's a k by k matrix. So A prime is some k by k where k is strictly greater than 1.
So if A prime has a column with all zeros, then determinant is zero, right? So no column if If it has a column with exactly one one, what can you say? Hmm? Exactly. The column with exactly one one. Right? So I have this I have this matrix A prime and it has a column with exactly one one. Then the determinant of A prime is basically I get rid of this column, look at the remaining sub matrix and I want to find the determinant of that. By induction it is a K minus 1 by K minus 1 matrix uh, which has a determinant plus or minus 1 or 0, right. So done. So now I have the situation that for every column of A prime has exactly two ones. Let's use the fact that it is bipartite now. It cannot be more than two ones because any column has the whole matrix itself has only two ones, right? So I have this A prime where every column has exactly two ones. It's a bipartite graph, so let's say my bipartition is L and R, right? So I split my rows of the matrix A prime based on whether they're coming from L or coming from R, right? So let's say these entries, because every row corresponds to a vertex, right? So vertex is an L or it is an R. So let's say these are the entries in L, these are the ones in R. So if I sum every column here, what do I get? 1. I can't get 2. Why not? It's bipartite. It's bipartite. L is independent. So no edge is sitting inside both endpoints. So if I sum all these guys, it's all 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. If I sum all these guys, I get 1, 1, 1, 1. So the determinant is 0. Okay? It's not linearly independent. determinant of A primus. So this is where we crucially use the fact that it is a bipartite graph. And every column has two ones. No edge is sitting inside L or inside R. So the one of the ones must be in L, one of the ones must be in R. So I split, so I take and the sum of this rows is equal to sum of these rows. That means the determinant, you know, there is some linear dependence, the determinant is 0. Okay, so to summarize, for bipartite graph, the constraint matrix of the vertex cover LP and the matching LP are totally unimodular. So the optimum solution of the LP LP can be solved in polynomial time. So if you solve the LP in polynomial time, you get the optimum solution. They are actually integral. So they correspond to minimum vertex cover and maximum matching. So they are the same. 
Okay, so that's the end of the third algorithm for Koenig's theorem. Okay, I think that I had a lot of other questions last time. So one question was, suppose the graph is tree plus k vertices, right? And since k vertices away from a tree, can we solve the minimum vertex cover? Is it, can we solve it in polynomial time? Is it NP complete? What kind of an algorithm can we get? So G is, or let's say, there exists an S contained in B, cardinal of S is some K, such that G minus S is a forest. Okay, forest or a tree where you can solve minimum vertex cover in polynomial time. You know, we just saw a very simple algorithm. Then, first question, can we find min vertex cover in poly in n comma k? So, so this is my S, it is k vertices and what I have is some collection of trees and there are lots of edges like this. This is my graph. The only thing I am telling you is that this is a forest. First question, this is an easy question. Can you actually solve this problem in polynomial in N and K or is it really NP complete? You can, you can do it in trees. So if I add a few more vertices, can you solve it or do you need sort of exponential dependence on k. Yes. What do you think? K is n minus 1. Or n minus 2 or something. Yeah. So I can take any graph, keep only one edge here, that's a forest, it's a tree. Put all the remaining vertices here. So the graph, my given graph is n minus 2 vertices away from a tree. If I can solve it in polynomial in n and k, I can solve the vertex cover problem in general because any graph can be written like this. Take any graph, I just keep, you know, uh, one edge which is a tree and everything else in my, we call this a modulator. And if you can solve it in polynomial time, you can solve the general vertex here in polynomial time. So this is not, so this is actually NP complete. This is sort of the reduction, okay. Now let's see how fast can we solve this problem. So it's, it's an NP complete problem and I want to find a minimum vertex cover. So, so some exponential dependence is required on N or K or something. Here is a, maybe you want to say something? I'll, I'll give you the No. So, so 
I'll give you an algorithm which is 2 power k times n. So what I do is, so I am looking for a minimum vertex cover, let S P I I already called it S, so let us say C B a minimum vertex cover, I do not know what this C is, I am going to find it and let C intersection S B S prime. what can you say about g minus s prime so what am i saying so here is you are given this graph i give you the set s the remaining graph and my edges are like this all edges here and i suppose my optimum vertex cover intersects here okay and i delete s prime What happens here? Can you have an edge here? S minus S prime, can you have an edge? No, right? Because who is going to cover this? This edge has, I mean, C is an optimum vertex cover. C is covering every edge. So, so C should cover this edge. So, you keep, so now, I mean, nobody here is going to cover this edge. Since C intersects S only here, this is an independent set. So, if I delete S prime, what I have yeah ok, I can I can say a little bit more. What about, no I do not want to look at G minus S prime, ok. Look at neighborhood of S minus S prime intersection B minus S. So, that means these S prime, these vertices are not in the optimum vertex cover. What can you say about their neighbors here? Their neighbors are only here. Uh, their neighbors can also be here. But what about their neighbors here? Who is going to cover them? Those vertices. Hmm? Those vertices. Right? If you look at the neighbors here, since the optimum vertex cover intersects S only here in S prime, the vertex cover does not contain these vertices. That means their neighbors must be in C because the only way these edges can be covered is by <coughs> picking the neighbors here. So, S double prime must be contained in C. So now let me look at G minus S double prime minus S prime. What can you say about that? So what have I done? I have deleted this set because that is in the solution. I have deleted the neighbors of these vertices. I have deleted them. What is left? That these guys are also gone because they are now. These are isolated now. What is left is these vertices, they form a forest. So here, so then I can find the minimum vertex cover in polynomial time here because it is a forest, right. So, is a forest and C minus S prime minus S double prime is a minimum vertex cover in the forest F. So now this suggests an algorithm. What is the algorithm? I am going to guess S prime. I mean I do not know S prime because I do not know C. But I can guess S prime and say I am looking for a minimum vertex cover. Suppose it intersects S in some S prime, some subset of S prime. After that it is a polynomial time right because I, I guess this. This is into the solution. 
anything which is omitted by that is independent if not independent then s prime guess is wrong i move on to the next guess and if this is independent i have to pick their neighbors into my solution and what is left is a forest so find the minimum vertex cover so s prime union that minimum vertex cover is forest is the vertex cover of the original graph try over all possible s primes and you will get pick the minimum and that's a minimum vertex cover and how much time does it take so let me write the algorithm let's carefully analyze the algorithm and then get done so this algorithm for every s prime contained in s if g of s minus s prime is not independent okay, it's independent then let s double prime is equal to neighborhood of s minus s prime intersection b minus s find the min vertex cover of g minus s prime minus s double prime let's call this c so i'll call this something else so um d then d union s prime union s double prime is a vertex cover now this is possible because this is a forest so you you got one vertex cover run it over every s prime and pick min among d union s prime union s double prime where min ranges over all s prime and that's our output just to summarize this algorithm i have my s the remaining graph so i pick some subset s prime and i'm going to put it into my solution this must be independent if not i move on to the next guess of s prime if this is independent pick all its neighbors into my solution they are forced so i got s prime i got the neighbors of the other n points of these guys delete that what i have is a forest find the minimum vertex cover include that and that is one vertex cover run it over all possible subsets of s prime and whatever gives me the minimum is the minimum vertex cover and that's because of all what i showed and how much time i have spent the number of subsets of s how many 2 to the k because s is of size k so i have spent 2 to the k then i have you know picked these neighbors and then for the remaining graph so maybe to power k times m with you care about so i have a forest and i pick the minimum vertex cover among that and then through all possible things so what this says is that if k is small this is a reasonable so we know we can solve the problem for trees in polynomial time very fast but if it's a graph it looks like a tree more or less in the sense that there is a small subset if you delete the graph becomes a tree then as a parameter i have a running time that is exponential on the size of this small subset 
but otherwise it's a polynomial time algorithm and such an algorithm is called we will define this formally next time fixed parameter tractable algorithm so what it is is that in moving away from the classical complexity where we analyze the running time based on only on the input size here apart from the input size you have some parameter what is that parameter it can be anything it makes sense and the parameter i used here is how far the graph is from a tree in the sense that i have some k vertices whose removal makes the graph a tree or a forest if i use that as a parameter then i have a running time of an algorithm with running time which is exponential on the parameter but otherwise on the input size it's pure polynomial time okay so this is the vertex cover is fixed parameter tractable parameterized by the size of the modulator to a forest actually it is a feedback vertex set right what is s what is s s is a feedback vertex set because when i delete s what i have is a forest that's a definition of feedback vertex set so what we have shown Let me write that formal statement and then we'll stop. Vertex cover is fixed parameter tractable, parameterized by Feedback vertex set size. So now this opens up our whole avenue of I want to look at the running time of algorithms. I want to design algorithms for problems which are generically hard, but you know I want to identify some parameters on the input or maybe on the output. And so if that parameter is small. maybe i can get an efficient algorithm so in particular for example this tells you that the feedback vertex set size is log n or order log n what you have is actually a polynomial time algorithm this 2 power order log n is polynomial so if i have a graph which has a very small feedback vertex set log n size feedback vertex set in that i can solve vertex cover in polynomial time okay so that gives you a feel of what we are going to talk about in this course which is on this parameterized fixed parameter tractable algorithm we look at different kinds of parameters of the input we will look at different algorithmic techniques to show problems fixed parameter tractable we have a notion of hardness in this framework as well we will look at all of them in the days to come okay